What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better podcast with your host, me, Paul Bursey, Bill Burr, and producer Andrew Themless. And today, you guys are listening to episode 73. We want to first thank everybody. Who, I'm sorry, 72, guys. We just talked about it before, and I thought it was 71, and they told me 72, and then I jump and say 73. What can I say? I'm excited we're back. Listen. Uh, we want to thank all of our listeners for the from the Anything Better podcast, and we appreciate you listening. You can get the Anything Better podcast where you guys get all your podcasts, Spotify, iTunes. We want to thank everybody who is making the Spotify lists of their top five favorite podcasts, and I saw Anything Better on there a whole bunch of times there, Bill. So we want to thank everybody for that. And uh, nice. now we will now we will get into who is the biggest best seventy twos in sports. All right, as a Red Sox fan, I got to go with Carlton Fist even though he wore 72 with the Chicago White Sox. He was 27 for us. Remember that? I'll do it the right way so it looks the right way because it's backwards on my thing. Stay fair. Stay fair. Stay fair. One of the great games ever played. Um, As far as in football, Dan Deardoff, uh, Ed Tutal Jones, Matt Light, Bill George, Henry Jordan. Uh, Who else? I'm just going to say it because I love this guy's name. Jim Dombrowski. You know, that guy's fingers were pointing every different fucking way to the end of his career. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. Um, that name just I would sounds say, like uh, uh, Mac the Sack, Tony McGee for the New England Patriots. That brutal roughing the passer call against Ken Stable. I believe he was number 72 also. And there you go, Paul. I'm not getting, doing all the other fucking sports. I'm still getting over my fucking miner's cough here. Um, so, dude, I wanted to tell you something so fucking hilarious. I was talking to you yesterday. Uh, you, you you called me when I was in a PC Richard and Son, and we were talking, and I told you that I was shopping for a refrigerator. And by the way, I don't like shopping for other things, but for some reason, appliances or like <coughs> things like that, I just enjoy it. I enjoy walking around going, hey, man, what's the square footage of the refrigerator in there? So I've been shopping for cars and I've been shopping for refrigerators and dishwashers. And I'm having a bo- I'm having a time of my life. Dude. What's your top three appliances, Paul? My top three appliances has to be now. I really, really enjoy a nice fridge. I enjoy a nice fridge. Spacious, but nice access to the freezer. Elegant. People- but no, <laughs> here's the thing. We did something different. Everybody has, a lot of people have, I should say, the two French door, okay? The typical is the two French door, and then the bottom, you pull out the freezer. We, Dude, skip- I've had a fucking chandelier hanging on the top of it. It's so fucking classy. Dude, Get this, for- Bill. It's all white, inside and out. Dude, for some reason, that they figured out how to put leather in the back of my, I got white leather in the back of my freezer. Hey, I got the most expensive refrigerator I could find. Back up, uh, we're moving. Yeah, that's great. The white Christmas tree. But, dude, I go like this. So I'll just give you – this is – it's actually funny that you you said the Italian thing. I go to PC Richard. They just didn't have the selection. <laughs> guy, The guy did the thing where he goes, hold on, I can get it for you. We got a shipment coming. You know, one of those. I'm like, no. And that's the other thing about me. When I go to buy, I'm buying now, today. I'm buying today. I, I'm going to buy it today, and I want it to the house as quickly as possible. And if that happens to be today, I'm happy. Guy, the best I could do is the, the best I could do is Tuesday. So I go to Best Buy, no good. I go to PC Richard and Son. Best Buy, dude. You go in there, man. It's like they don't have anything on. It's nothing on the shelf anymore. And I heard, and I hate to say this, but I heard that if you buy something like that at Best Buy, if something goes wrong, a customer service is not going to be. So then I go to then I go to Home Depot. I didn't realize Home Depot has refrigerators. Then I went to Lowe's. They have refrigerators, nothing. So somebody goes, no, there's an appliance store. Go to this appliance store. So I go to this appliance store late. It's about, it's getting dark. It's like five o'clock. I go in there. Dude, you're going to love this. I go in there. This dude comes out and he's walking like this, right? And he's got white hair, slick back. You can tell. I was going to say some old guy with hair coming out of his ears. No, yeah, no. He's white hair, and he walks in, and he just had the thing. As soon as I walked in, he goes, can I help you with anything? And I go, yeah, man, refrigerators. He goes, follow me. I instantly liked him, dude. He was – I instantly – he just goes, come with me. So I go, yeah, I'm having a hard time with the dimensions. 
because you know that's the one thing about we have a space in our kitchen it's got to be like 33 inches deep it's got to be uh you know 68 to something inches tall so i go listen buddy i go i just went to pc rich all these places i go the dimensions are hard he goes give me what you got dude he was like a stockbroker he goes what do you got what do you got what do you... i go all right i got 68 high i got this and that. he goes come here yep come here dude he gets there. He shows. I got this one, dude. He was like a car salesman, but he he knew exactly what I wanted. I go, listen. I go. I need the ice and the water in the front. You got. I want the cubes. I go. They're trying to sell me cubes that they make inside the thing. I like the cubes outside. You know, like you know. Yeah, I'm I mean. not going to be opening doors. Yeah, making goes, a Moscow Mule at three in the morning. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. He goes, I go, no, listen, if I want a cube, I want it right there. Cause you know, the other salesmen were going, no, no, you get the ice. You just got to open the bottom. It makes it to there. I'm like, nah. okay. I was like, can I get the cube up here though? And I like the, you know, it. so he goes, you want the cubes? <laughs> Come here. Come here. <laughs> so then he goes, dude, he was so funny. And I just go like this to him. I swear to God. I go, you Italian? He goes, of course. He goes, he goes, and then he goes like this. He goes, I swear to God, he said this. He goes, there's two types of people in the world. <laughs> and I just started laughing. I didn't even know what they, dude, this guy, then then once he knew that I laughed, then he started cursing. He goes, yeah, dude, come here. I'm, I'm not going to sell you a fucking thing. Dude, Bill, I was like, I'm buying my appliances off this guy. And then I go, listen, my wife would like the dishwasher to match the thing. He goes, yeah, dude. <laughs> it was like, dude, this guy, and then. So the finally, fuck are we I'm doing laughing. here? So finally, I'm laughing so hard. <coughs> it's all true. It's all true. This happened literally like 12 hours. So finally, I'm laughing so hard. I go, dude. I go, I'm. I. I don't tell people this. I got to put you in my act. I go, I'm a comedian. I go, dude. You're fucking hilarious. He goes, yeah. Oh. He goes, I used to go to the clubs. He goes, I used to go to the comedy clubs all the time. You know, back in the day. He goes, you know who my favorite is, right? And dude, of course I knew. And he just goes, dude, the Dice Man, the dude. So I'm going. I was gonna say Rodney. The dice. No, he goes. He, he goes. Oh, dice! I used to see dice in the city, dude. This guy was so good. And then he goes like this: "What's your name?" So he searches me up. And then, dude, this is the weirdest thing. Andy Milanakis is. You know Andy Milanakis? Oh yeah. His cousin was working at the thing. So this guy, this guy's name is Tony. He goes, "Hey, this this Paul Verzi right here, one of the top comics in the." And the other guy goes, "Dude, it was." Yeah, V I R, dude. It was, and then I uh, I call him last night. I said I gotta just talk to him. He goes, yeah. I go, listen, my wife. I go, I'm not trying to be that guy. He goes, he goes, you can't. He goes like this. He didn't say it like a dick, like testing my manhood, but he just goes, okay, so you can't pull the trigger right now. And I go, I go, I'm gonna pull the trigger. I said I just want it. My wife's homesick. I just want to tell her because she wanted it to match. So he goes, all right, no problem. He goes, I'm gonna print out both for you. All the specs, all the details. I'm gonna print out both. You go home. He gives me his car. You come. He goes like this. He goes, call me anytime. He goes, you call me anytime. He goes, and I'm watching your special tonight. <laughs> so, so, I, so I go home. I tell like, you don't get that at Best Buy, at Lowe's, Home Depot. Dude, you get a fucking was, zombie. It was one of the best shopping experiences I've had. I was like, if everybody, if Christmas shopping was like that, the people wouldn't just be online at Amazon. Like, oh, you need a sweater? Get over here. What color? That's what you want. Uh, so I ended up buying a dishwasher and a and a refrigerator from the guy. He got commissions. He made some money. Uh, you know, it was great. And now I refer people to him. Well, there you oh, go. Did you think about giving him a little extra cash? Did it cross your mind? I like this guy. Let me put a 50 in his hand. No, and here's why. Because I saw the same model, I saw the same model refrigerator I got for a hundred less somewhere else. And instead of me saying, Hey Tony, not for nothing, because I almost did that. I go, Tony, not for nothing. I saw, will you match that? What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna fight the guy for a hundred dollars. You can't do that. Plus, he's running a smaller store, those bigger ones. Yeah. Dude, you're paying the extra hundred for the experience. Yeah, dude. It was like, oh my God. He goes, you know who my guy is? He goes, dice. I was just like, yeah, I'm buying from. Have you been watching Dice's new thing that he does on Instagram? It's one of my favorite things. That the the picture. People listening, he fucking picks somebody out, just randomly on the street. Being like, hey, excuse me, I I saw you looking at me, and they're immediately weirded out. And he just goes, I I know you want to get a picture, and they're always like, no, no, I don't want to get. He starts following him down the fucking street. <laughs> I don't know how he keeps a straight face. Oh, when he does that. It's so brutally uncomfortable. I can't watch like the whole thing a lot of times. 
I started to watch that one where he went into the flower store with that Asian oh. woman and the other one, and they're just like all – and, he, and he's all bundled up. Dude, he's that's to my glasses favorite glasses on and his thing on. I saw you looking at me. I love when he goes, you know, it's a little cold, so if we could make it quick – and then he goes, no, but you're a fan. And the guy goes, no, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. And he goes, no, but you want it, dude. It's I, it's it's that level of Jim Florentine. That's why him and Jim Florentine, get, those guys have a thing where they could sit in uncomfortability like that. It's amazing, dude. No, it's unreal. So <laughs> Jim Florentine with the fucking pepper on the, on the, on the piece of fish. That, that's, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I can't believe how fucking stupid those people were. At some point, I'd be like, I'm not giving you any more fucking pepper. And they never they did. did. They did two and then went in and he said they were in the kitchen crying. And he told Don Jameson at the beginning of the sketch, they go, nobody look at him. So they're all looking down and he just goes more because they didn't want to make eye contact. They go, this is going to get real awkward. They went through two of those pepper mills and then another one. And he goes, all right, turn it over. Okay, go ahead. What about the one where Jim Florent, um, Jim Norton and Club Soda Kenny went to go look at luggage at one of those tourist shops in Times Square? Oh. And the whole thing was to curse as much as they possibly could. And Kenny's following him. And Kenny goes, <laughs> Florentine goes, yeah, we want to fuck you. I need to make sure this thing can fit all my fucking luggage. <laughs> Club Soda looks at him and goes, what cocksucking color you want? Yeah, that no, was him and Norton. Yeah, I mean, no one's like, yeah, can this fit all my fucking shit in there? And then Kenny goes, <laughs> hey, he asked you a fucking question. <laughs> oh, oh, <God>. Kenny's, <coughs> Kenny's another one. Doesn't give a fuck. No, no, Kenny's, uh, Kenny's fucking really, really funny, man. He'll yell stuff well, out. I got one for you. The biggest thing in my life, you got the, uh, the new uh, refrigerator and, and uh, dishwasher. Yeah. The biggest thing in my life right now is I got a new garage door opener. My last uh, garage door opener, it opened it up, and the sound it was making, I was afraid to not walk. I, I wouldn't walk in until the garage door was all the way up because I just felt like it was on its last legs, and I was going to walk in. It was going to come down on my neck, you know, and then they would just find you. What was it Hours making noise? Later, was hours it making- later, your family finds you. Like, where is he? <laughs> And it's yeah. just your neck down is in the driveway oh. with your legs at some weird angle. So they know you're, they already know you're dead when you're walking up. <laughs> <laughs> what like, was it making one of those noise? Stupid fucking deaths. Used to hear about those dumb deaths. Oh, it was a guy like two towns over all the time. Fucking garage came down, hit him right on the, just, you know, it just hit in that right spot. It hit him in the oh. right spot. He's just dead. Yeah. Family of four, they got to move. I always never, I never really liked people that gave that news. Like, dude, did you hear about Ted? And as soon as you hear that, you know, as soon as you hear, dude, you know Ted Smith from so-and-so? You know the next sentence is bad. And it's just, it's like. I'd uh, say that's old lady shit, but a bunch of guys do it. No, guys do it. Jim, uh, Jim Brewer had that joke where he would go, yeah, but I just saw him yesterday. Dude, you know what's fucked up? There was uh, there was this guy I knew. He used to he had he had a um, like a townie bar, and I remember his deal was you'd go in there. What's a wait? What's a townie bar like? A dive? A like townie a- bar is just like where just the locals go in. Oh, okay. Like you literally know everybody who comes in. Got it. <clears throat> like what Cheers was supposed to be. Yeah. So um, you'd like go in and uh. He just had fucking awful stories about everybody. And then he would try to get more stories out of you by asking awful questions. Like, how's so-and-so doing? I heard, is he diabetic? Is he, I heard he's a diabetic now. Like, shit like that. How's he doing? Is he still gambling? Yeah. Did he put on weight? Yes. Did his dad die? And it's just like, did you, did you ever hear anything good about anybody? Yeah, a guy's cheating on his way. Hear what happened to his family? He's horrible. It's like, is hey, it, he totaled his car, him? man. Yeah, no, that's and a high uh, deductible too around the holidays. It's just like, all right, buddy. <laughs> the face you made, yeah, like they're like almost enjoying it. It's yeah, it's the Germans have a word for that, Schadenfreude. That's how fucked up a a a, a culture I come from. 
We're just south on the Mediterranean where everybody seems to know how to live. Although, let's not, you know, Italy's corrupt as hell. Who's kidding who, all right? You know? <laughs> but I'm just saying, the scenery, the way people fucking eat, the coffee. Oh, we got to go to Italy just to get a cup of coffee. I can't believe I went there and I wasn't a coffee drinker. What a fucking asshole. And then I go, I, I, I go to France. I didn't realize that was a tea country. I ordered an espresso over there, dude. I swear to God. Oh. I almost fucking just spit taken through the cup. I didn't do I mean, I didn't almost do that. I don't even <laughs> want to do that. I'm speaking in hyperbole. It was disgusting. I will stand by that. All right, everybody. It's Thuma. Introducing the bed by Thuma, handcrafted from eco-friendly, high-quality, uh, upcycled wood. You'll find beautiful, unique variations in natural grain. The minimalist uh, uh, design featuring Japanese joinery helps elevate any space. It's super supportive for your mattress, breathable, and made uh, to naturally minimize noise. Hey, you know what I mean? And if those kids are home. And create space. <laughs> hey, don't worry, honey. And that's literally what it is. I know. Uh, made... Somebody's in-laws are over. You can still get. Yeah. There's no reason for a bed a bed ad to say <laughs> minimize noise. <laughs> what are you doing otherwise? Yeah. I'm a lunatic. What are you jumping on your bed? Um, Vigorously <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> the visual of that is brutal and uh, hilarious. Uh, made for how you live. The bed by Thuma is backed with a lifetime warranty ships right to your door in three easy to maneuver boxes and takes about five minutes to assemble with no tools required. You can easily build it yourself. Thuma practices an intentional less is more design philosophy <coughs> for the bedroom with clean lines, uh, subtle curves and a lifestyle enhancing uh, details. Thuma proves that simplicity is the truest form of sophistication. Thuma works with a one tree planted to plant one tree for every bed and nightstand sold. There you go, people. Okay, it's the green game, right, Bill? It's the green game? Hey, that's what that's what upcycle means rather than recycle. Oh, there you go. Upcycle uh, means we're planting trees. Can they make one bed out of every tree? I don't know. Uh, probably. They made a nightstand. The trees you think you need to... By the way, the way they were describing that bed made me want to fuck it. Had the, all, the, all the qualities you want in a woman. It's got curves. Hey. It's quiet. It's supportive. Minimize, yeah, minimize the noise, okay? Uh, all That's of their brassy. <laughs> all <laughs> which <coughs> assemble. Um, all of their essentials are Green Guard Gold certified. Create the feeling of checking into your favorite boutique hotel suite. I like that. Uh, but at home with the bed by Thuma. And now go to Thuma.com slash better to receive $25 gift, uh, gift, I'm sorry, $25 credit towards your purchase to the bed plus free shipping in the continental U.S. Go to Thuma.com slash better. That's Thuma.com slash b-e-t-t-e-r for 25 dollar credit dude that bed does sound like if you had a guest room bed sounds fucking awesome um, i mean i'm i'm sold on it dude you, you don't need tools and it takes five minutes to put together bring bring some whore it's home curvy and it's supportive <laughs> kidding dude take the whore thing out um I, i've been married 20 years okay yeah, you right. feel like you're at a hotel you see and some, your wife while feeling like you're having an affair. Yo, you see some the creep. New Puma bed. <laughs> you see, you see some creep. Hold on, sweetheart. The box came. It's gonna take me five minutes. I don't need tools. <laughs> Make yourself something to drink. <clears throat> uh, okay, everybody. It's trade coffee. The holidays are approaching, so it's time to start thinking about what you're going to gift your loved ones. And if you're looking for something to get, uh, to get even the hardest. To shop for, look no further with the personalized coffee subscription from Trade Coffee. We actually, Paul, have you know what I say? If what? somebody's hard to shop for, fuck them. Yeah, I know. I Fucking know. open I'm your mouth and say what you want. You can't. 
<laughs> Stacy and I had this coffee. Stacy's now makes it every morning. She loves it. It's really, really good. Trade Coffee is coffee subscription service that makes it so simple to discover new coffees and make your best cup of coffee at home every day. Uh, trade partners with the nation's top rated independent roasters to send you coffee. They know you'll love fresh to your home and on the prefer on your preferred schedule, whether you already know what you like. I like a little myself. I like a little strong roast myself. If I go hot, I like a strong roast. Um, it's a strong roast. Like, like, if, like that Colombian. you ever hear J Joey Diaz talk about the Colombian coffee, like the Colombian roast. Dude, you drink a cup of Colombian, like you're like, you're like, it's one of those. Uh, okay. Hey, it's got a punch, Bill. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, if Joey <laughs> Diaz is getting behind it, that's got to oh, be dude. rocket fuel. Uh, but this, Let this me tell you something, cocksucker. I got the fucking coffee for you. Uh, uh, all right, where, 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 are, where are, where am I here? Um, whether you already know what you like or not, uh, new to uh, special specialty coffee and need some help trademarks it easy and convenient to discover new coffees um yeah we do love it man stacy likes the uh stacy got one the other day and she didn't have one the next day and she goes dude we got to keep getting that we got to keep getting that uh trade coffee is a perfect gift for loved ones they make it easy with their digital gifting options for last minute shoppers or their coffee equipment bundles for something under the tree Treat yourself or the coffee lover in your life with Trade Coffee right now. Trade is offering our listeners here at Anything Better a total of $30 off uh, subscription and access for limited time holiday special <coughs> at drinktrade.com slash better. That's drinktrade.com slash better for $30 off your Trade Coffee uh, drinktrade.com slash better. My wife and I really do love it. It's a great, uh, it's a great cup of coffee and they have great stuff. So check it out and, uh, enjoy it for the holidays. Um, uh, dude, my son was talking, Lucas was talking about France. He goes, dad, he goes, he goes, that baguette that I had, that baguette that I had across the street from that oh. place. He goes, he goes, dude, he was just eating it. Like just eating the bread. He was like, this is the most. And he goes, he goes, that Italian restaurant. I'm telling you, man, I, Paris was the food in France from everything from breakfast, croissant to, to, to the baguette, the bread, the dinners, the drinks. And another thing that I didn't know about Europe is, especially the places that I went in L London and, and France, it's big on gin drinks. So like in London, okay, right. London is all like gin bar, go to the gin bar. Oh, do you want this gin? And it was all like, and I'm like, oh, dude, gin is, dude, last time I drank like a lot of gin, I, I was arrested. Like gin gets me fucked. That's what I was saying. Like I always, gin to me is that's, that's a, that's a mean liquor. Dude, you have two gin and tonics. I don't care who you are. Oh, I drink. You have two like stiff gin and tonics. You're fucking hammered, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's something weird. It's like you're drinking flowers and then all of a sudden you just, yeah. They're like half clothed, missing a shoe. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So, uh, wait, what was I going to say? There was another thing that that guy You're said. Talking about in France. Yeah, no, dude. Uh, we went to this Italian uh, restaurant called Lino. Uh, uh, I uh, L I N O, and we sat outside under this dude. It was literally one of the best Italian meals I've ever had in my life. Any city. It, it can rival any meal I ever had. And then me and Stacy, we had the dessert and the, the, the dessert drink. And she was just like, I would literally fly. Like now I know when somebody goes, Hey, they flew on a private jet just to, for dinner. And people are like that. So I'm like, no, no, no. If I, if I had access to that billionaire type shit, <coughs> and I was like, Hey, let's go to Lino in Paris tonight. That's the shit that I would do. That's still um, fucking a, a fucking horrible, disgusting thing to do. Even no, if you had the money to do it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's completely grossly overcharged. It makes no oh, sense. It's bad for the environment. But here's the thing, Paul. You know what the fucking hardest thing in the world is? Is try to help out somebody less fortunate and actually getting the money not only to somebody less fortunate, but somebody that is then going to take that money and do the right fucking thing with it. That is the, one of the hardest. Like people just act like, oh, that guy's got, you know, he's got all this. Why doesn't he give just fucking give it to that? It's like, because that dude's going to go to the liquor store. That guy's going to go to the track. They're going to go out and go buy a fucking, you know, 
Because nobody, I, like, dude, the amount of fucking people actually in this business that I see that end up doing well and they get money and they literally don't know what to do with it. Like, I think that's done on purpose. The fact that no one knows, like, I still don't know. I just don't, I just don't buy a bunch of dumb shit and I pay off the stuff I have. That's like the remedial level I have of understanding money. But the, then you see these other people, like, you know, they know how to like, you know, buy places, fix them up, do all of that yeah. shit and create a little fucking empire. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why it's like that. Yeah. I, you talk to these people and they're like, dude, you got 75 K. Here's what you do, dude. You go down South, you buy a little house for you, fix it up. Somebody goes in there, you sell it. And then all of a sudden like, and it just keeps going. And to you my mind, you got to manage the property. You fucking take a dude. It's like, what? And then they're like, after eight properties, you're all liquid. And you're like, all right, dude. All right. Like, <laughs> like, where do I buy? Like, where my do I thing is every time I think to go do that, I get my, but people around me talk me out of it. Eh? You don't want to go out there. They fucking got drought. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. It's just like, I mean, yeah, I just have my house, dude, and I'm paying Elvis taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hang on a second, Paul. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> dude, everybody is getting sick. My house. Everybody's up, dude. My my. As we speak right now. My wife is under the covers in bed like this. I had to get her tea. She's got Gatorade next to her medicine. My daughter's been out of school and I'm just, and I'm going, you know, I'm going, guys, I love you, but there's no kisses. Good night. And I'll be downstairs because, you yeah, know, I don't, don't want, want this, any fucking part of that. Yeah. Do oh, you I was crushing it at the gym. I was on my way back, dude. I was, I was like doing like body weight exercise. I was getting ready to do a pull up, dude, so I can win this fucking bet. I haven't been in the gym in three fucking weeks, dude. Three fucking weeks. Spent Thanksgiving by myself. Oh, I was going to say. My family went over to uh, my mother-in-law's. They made me like a plate. And I fucking love it. Dude, I sat by myself watching football. And then I watched that movie, Cat People, from the 80s. I don't know why. I went on the Criterion channel. They had 80s horror. But it was Criterion, so it wasn't like any like the Friday the 13th shit that you saw. It was all this obscure stuff. And I was like, Cat People, I remember that movie. I remember that movie being a little slow, but I liked the soundtrack. And I watched it, and it was the same same thing again. Um, The other night I watched an old movie. I was sitting up, and I go, let me just fucking scroll through this. And I decided to watch, because I have my nights now where if I'm home late, and I'm taking some, you know, I'm home for the holidays more than less. I don't like to go running around during December time and everything. Oh, you know how to live. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm ready for I'm going to go on a big tour. Tickets on sale, paulverzi.com um, next year. But um, I watched uh, Any Given Sunday with Al Pacino, the Oliver Stone movie. And here's what I got from it. I didn't really, the second time around, I didn't really like it as much. But the Al Pacino's lo- Al Pacino's things that he says, even to the owner's daughter in a meeting and then things he says to the team and then things he says privately to Jamie Foxx as like the backup who's now the quarterback. Dude, I got to tell you, some of the lines in that movie from Pacino movies, not movie. I didn't love love, especially to be honest with you, especially the second time around. I liked it less the more I watched it. But dude. Some amazing lines by Pacino as the coach in that movie, as far as like life lessons and also like what a good coach would say. I thought it was pretty, I thought that was cool to watch it, you know, but. Yeah, I remember seeing that at the movies. I I, I don't remember the movie. I just remember that guy standing there with like a fucking two foot dick for like nine minutes. It felt like on screen, just standing there with this giant Hogan hanging out. Oh, when she walked into the she walked into the uh the locker room. I don't remember anything else other than this guy had like a fucking two foot dick. And for some reason Oliver Stones is like, You were gonna look at this two foot dick. Yeah, it like was nine, it felt like nine minutes. It's like yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um the movie had some shit in it though, when you look at the year, because it was like early mid nineties, uh ahead of its time as far as like 
the concussion and protocol and stuff. Like Dennis Quaid was the starter who was all fucked up and they wanted him back for the playoffs and then it ends up going to Jamie Foxx. And some of the things that Dennis Quaid says to him, like, yeah, why don't you fuck, like, basically, like, you're a flash in the pan. You're all about this hype. You don't want to win. You don't have it. It was pretty, like, and then it was, like, then he realized he's bitter and shit. It was cool. It was cool. But, um, dude, I watched something last night that really fucking freaked me out. Peacock has a thing now where they did a three-part series where, for the first time since the trial of Casey Anthony, she actually talks about everything. And, dude... I saw Anthony Jeselnik said something like, wow, that just got flipped on its head. And then I watched it. And after the first episode, I'm like, all right, dude, halfway through the second one, I'm going, what happened? And then after the third one, I'm going, what? And I was just going like, dude, if that's the public perception that the media had and then that shit happened and you're going, oh, fuck, dude, I'm never judging. I don't know. What is, what is who's Casey Anthony? Casey Anthony was the girl in Florida who was two year old daughter. She was. They said she was out partying for 30 days when the two-year-old daughter was missing, and then they found the body 31 days later and everything like that, and then she got acquitted. And everybody was like, they were protests. They couldn't believe she got acquitted. And uh, she's basically, since she got acquitted, been in hiding because the her defense team had to set her up and make sure she was okay because there were death threats for the defense team and her, calling her baby killer, this and that. And then she's just making these allegations and, and – uh, you know, about family members and stuff. with people. It's wild, man. It's fucking wild. You know, it's, yeah. It would almost be like if the OJ trial, if OJ did a three-day documentary, and then all of a sudden you found out some shit that made you go, fuck, well, maybe it wasn't all him. <laughs> but, but obviously in that case it was. Yeah, but I always feel like with the documentary, that's the job of the documentary. If it's just going to show you what you already know, you're like, yeah, I already saw that. I already knew that. So yeah. it's going to be like, huh? And you always fall for that shit, Paul. I, I remember he, one time you called me up. I was walking my dog, rest her soul. And you fucking <laughs> called me up, absolutely convinced that Courtney Love killed Court, Kurt Cobain. I actually had to question my friendship with you. That she, I was sitting there going, Paul, so you're <laughs> telling me. A fucking junkie that uh, lived in Los Angeles flew in the throes of addiction, flew to Seattle, killed a world famous fucking uh, 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 rock star, and the local police could not figure this out. They couldn't figure it out, but but this guy in the documentary did. That's what you're telling me. Dude, guilty as charged, man. If you give me even a compelling, I love true crime shit so much. If you give me a fucking Diet Coke and a compelling story on a on a recliner, I'll buy it, dude. <laughs> it's like a guilty. I'm like, yo, maybe that didn't happen. Maybe that. <laughs> I used to be like, I, you know, you go through a phase of that, and then you kind of figure out like, oh, that's just like what they're doing. This isn't really a documentary. It's just presenting an argument. Um, I will say yeah. this, Courtney Love, though. Courtney Love, fucking a long time ago, was on a red carpet. And they said, yeah, what's what's one of the hardest things in Hollywood? She was like, yeah, try not to get raped by Harvey Weinstein. She fucking said that. Wait or, a minute. She said that before all this shit came way, out? Way, way, way before. She said something. She basically said this guy's a fucking. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, dude. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, but she uh, also was, you know, fucking on heroin and running around just fucking being crazy. You can't walk around all sweaty and shit and be on heroin and have people, like, listen to what you're saying. It's tough. It's, yeah, it's, it's a tough. tough one. It's tough. It was like... It wasn't like a functional heroin. Like, there's actual functional people on heroin that are they function. Like, I don't even know if they get high. They just stay, like, level. And they go to work. And, and they're like, dude, all right, this is what we need to do in the next quarter. <laughs> yeah, it was like when Flava Flav would talk about love, but he had like Viking horns on, but he would actually say something that you were kind of like, oh, chicks are into that. But he would, I <laughs> love Flavor of Love. <laughs> you know who loved it? My dad. He was like, this is incredible. <laughs> that was a great show, man. I love it. Was- he, she should have picked hoops. <laughs> she was the clear fucking winner. Right? Yeah. I think so, yeah, if I remember correctly. Why did yeah. I feel like he ended up getting with Brigitte Nielsen? She called him Foofy. 
Oh, yeah. One of the worst nicknames ever. There was nothing about him that no. was goofy. No. I love when he tried stopping a fight. Like he, when he was the voice of reason, but with like Viking horns on, it was my favorite. You know, I like they, doing they this. would always cut back to him and you just go, wow. Remember that? <laughs> wow. I love Flavor Flavor. I do remember that. <laughs> oh, where he would be, he would be so like, but he was like a happy, like he was a type of guy that you like, I feel like if you had a beer with Flavor Flav and you talk to him, he would just be fucking awesome. Yeah. Do you ever get into that shit? You like start rooting for like a celebrity couple. There's like something about them. You just root for them. I was actually rooting for Shaq and Hoops. They look like they were both silly, laughing, having a great fucking time. And when they broke up, I actually got bummed out. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on with me? Like, what's missing in my life right now? My wife does that. Like, my wife loves Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Was like, like, she was like over the moon when they got back together, like Winnipeg was when they got their fucking hockey team back. She was like that level of excited. Uh, dude, I'm working on this thing. I'm working on this thing <laughs> now where, and I don't know if I should do it, but I want to do it on stage where the dudes that I know, like the, I know, I just want to basically say a lot of the dudes in your life, your friends, their wives can be annoying when you hear this, you know, you got to ask the general, got to see what the general says. Right. And I got a lot of friends, dude. And this is when I don't know if I could do. I got a lot of friends who have wives who were like a decade or more younger. So I want to compare like when the friend is at Duke, she's fucking in sixth grade. And then I want to say something that he's doing. And then something she's doing, I go, got to ask the general. You got to ask the general. And then have him be like, dude, I just, I'm trying to get my master's, man. I got to get, and she's like, she's doing too many crayons. You got to ask the general. got to ask the general. And you know, I, actually, I actually say, got to ask the boss to oh, my friends. Think- I do, but when I don't want to do something, I just act like I'm not, I act like my wife isn't cool. I go, I got to ask the boss first. My wife, my wife is like literally pushing me out of the house. It's just beyond me. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it is beyond me that a grown up, a grown man has to say, can't say, hey, I'm going to do this. And then when the person goes, well, what do you mean? Like, no, no, I'll take care of thing. But after I take care of dinner and everything, I'm going here and then have to like have to fight that. I don't understand that. And I'm and and by the way, yeah. I have to I still have to fight. Like I'm not saying I don't have to fight. As a matter of fact, the reason why I came up with this is because I have to have an explanation. I would love my wife to go and have a girls' night. You know, have fun. You know, have fun. Go, go to the yeah. casino. Yeah. That's how my wife looks at it. Because if I'm having a guy's night, that means I'm not home. She can have a, a ladies' night. Yeah. I th- actually way. don't. I will say though, I think those guys who go, hey, you know, got to ask the general, got to ask the boss. Those guys who have completely capitulated, like they're the happiest married guys ever. But I think a lot of them though, kind of wanted that. Like that's, they wanted, like I feel like those are the guys where they're like not looking for a wife as much as they're looking for another mother. Like you, I, I just give you the money, you fucking. I, I mean, I don't even know what's going on. And da, da, da. That's that old Bill Cosby bit where it's like, that's a genius. Because they're, they're doing that thing where they're acting like they're dumb. And then they're giving her all the power so she can feel comfortable that she's running everything. And then he doesn't have to deal with anything. You and I both do the same thing, though, ordering a UFC fight. I right, got to call the general. You know me. I yeah, can't yeah. just look at a screen and fucking follow these simple instructions. Actually, no, I can't. no dude, my wife, <coughs> I, I'll, my wife does the manlier shit. My wife will put the fucking, so one time I said, Stacy, give me a second. I'm going to help you with the Christmas tree. Give me a second. And dude, she managed to hold this fucking Christmas tree and get it in the stand and screw it in like without me. And I go, why did you? And she was like, I just wanted to get it done now. And I was like, you know, all right. She moved couches and shit. It's like, all right, you know. So I was fucking, you know. There you go. I mean, what, 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 it's not a hey, bad thing, Paul. No, no, no. Listen, I, but, I wish my wife would do shit like that. She doesn't even bring in the trash barrels, Paul. 
They're empty plastic containers on wheels. And for some reason, she's acting like that's like a guy job. Like you can't do that. I mean, this thing's like lighter than a stroller. Hey, ask me if you if I want to get a cigar with you tonight. Hey, Paul. Yeah. What are you doing tonight? You want to go grab a stick? Oh, that was, okay. gotta ask the general though. I'd love to. <laughs> I would really love to because I could use one. But if she says no, <laughs> I guess it's no. It's like no. I'm going to smoke a cigar. You know what's funny too is that, but they're happy, Paul, because <laughs> there's a bliss. No, she said no. So I got to <laughs> stay home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is that? Did you not want to go anyway? Because that's the I'm only a, time I say that. See, I'm a dummy where I'll go, yeah. Like, if you ask me that question, you go, hey, Paul, man, do you want to go? I'll be like, yeah, dude, I'll meet you and Themis. We'll go. I say, yeah, and then I say it. And then she goes, but you can't because we have this. And then I go, well, cancel that. And then it's a fight. Stupid. I, yeah, I kind of do the same thing. It's stupid. You said I mean, you were going to do this. It's like, no problem. I can fucking drop you off and then I'll go back. I'll go do that. But I thought yeah. you were going to be at the event with us. Yeah. Man, I'll yeah. get there towards like the end. Come on. You, you, you know, I always say something dumb when I'm there. No, I'll be like 20 minutes. I'm going to just take care of it, but I'm going to be there. We always do that. Like, I'll show up. <laughs> Oh, you by walk the way. away from me the second I get there anyways. What's the difference if I'm fucking there or not? Yeah, Because uh, they love us. They just want us there, Bill. Um, guess what tonight is? Tonight is the first practice of me as an assistant coach for my fifth grade daughter's basketball team. And I dude, literally I literally just pictured you throwing your hat down the court. No, no, no. I got drills. They girl, It's funny. The girls love me because I'm just like, I'm one of those where I go, look. I don't care if you don't. I, you, I, I'll, I'll give you a speech I'm going to give tonight. You ready? Right. If the, When the coach says, I'm going to go, guys. I was thinking about this in the car today when I got my coffee. I go, guys, I want everybody to know on this team, I don't care if you make a mistake. As long as you make a mistake trying to be better and helping your teammates, that that's when you should make a mistake. It's the people that don't make mistakes that play it safe that aren't going to be playmakers. So don't be afraid. You make a mistake, it's fine. How about that one? Does the head coach know that you've designated time for a speech or is he just going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to say like, if he throws it my way and I'm always going to keep my speeches down to like 15 seconds. <laughs> As you undo everything that he says. And remember, <laughs> let's do this the way we practice it all week. Paul, well, what do you got to say? <laughs> hey, I don't give a fuck what we didn't practice this week. As long as you're out there trying. The guy just say, hey, Paul, come on. You, you give a fuck a little bit, right? No. Paul, Paul's practicing in his car, but then right when he starts to talk, the coach just blows his whistle. Okay, let's get out there. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna play we're not gonna play scared on this team. Okay. Fear never did anything. We're not gonna play scared. Okay. <laughs> All of a sudden he's like, hey Paul, dude, I was gonna say that. I was I actually I actually had the I was queued up for the fear thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not take any stupid fouls either. Hey, I don't give a fuck if you foul out tonight. All right? As long as you got your fucking A game out there, you're gonna, are you going to undo uh, everything he says? Oh, dude, I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to take a picture of me. On the, I'll have Stacy take a picture of me coaching on the court while the girls are running down. And, dude, this, this is the first year, fifth and sixth grade girls. They're running full court, dude. They're going five on five you're in gonna the regular. going to be great, Paul, because you understand – how to connect with people. And then you have that need to be liked. So you're not going to be a dick about it. You know? Well, I don't want to, even if you get in somebody's grill, you're still going to do it in a good way. Dude. One dad was fucking hilarious. One dad goes, dude, I heard you got, you know, you got my daughter. And I go, yeah. And just joking. Cause he knows I'm a comic and he's a funny guy. He goes, listen, I just want you to know you could get physical. I just want to put that out. There. <laughs> 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 Barnick said that to his kiss. Is uh said don't be easy on her. Don't be oh, easy. Really? Her. Make her play the game. Yeah. Well, because yeah. just let him know that he could coach her. He wasn't saying abuse her. He's just like fucking teach her how to play the goddamn game. How funny would it be if I go, guys, listen, this is and, and the coach is my his name is Bill too. But guys, this is Coach Bill's team. I'm just the assistant. You need any help? You talk to me. This is his team. But tonight, <laughs> I just go into my shit. <laughs> I like it better if you plagiarized the famous fucking head coach's speech. 
Oh my the god! I, too, the girls are too young to know whose it is, but the I catch just do coach knows. New Brockney from uh, the Notre Dame. I just give the Notre Dame speech verbatim. Or they might uh, beat us any night of the week, but not tonight. You do the Lake Placid one. Oh, did I cut out? Did I freeze? Verzi froze. Um, I think you froze there, Verzi. Let's wrap this up, dude, because I'm gonna have a coughing fit that I don't want to put. Uh, did I freeze? Through. I froze. Am I? Yeah. Am I right? All right. But well, we're gonna wrap. Uh, we're gonna. Ha- what, what time are we at, Andrew? We're good. I got. All right. Um, yeah. We're good to wrap up, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, this has hey, been. Hey, Paul. Fun- listen, I don't care if you wrap it up. Or if you keep going, <laughs> as long as you're on that microphone trying, trying to tell some jokes. Dude, that's, how funny would it be? Guys, guys, I don't care if we make mistakes and he comes in, but but we don't want him. Hold on a second. I don't <laughs> If you guys need to foul, just guys, we don't want to foul. It's Listen, I know it's a team sport, but if you're feeling it, you know, a shooter shoots. Just two completely different philosophies. We don't suck. We just got to start hitting our threes. Please. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. Well, guys, this has been <laughs> so, oh, man, this was such a fun one. Um, this has been uh, Anything Better, episode 72. Like I said, get Anything Better where you get all your podcasts, Spotify, iTunes. Got a big tour coming up. Uh, oh, December 10th, I'll be at the Fairfield Comedy Club working a new hour. Two shows, December 10th, Fairfield Comedy Club. And January 28th, guys, Toronto. Toronto, Canada. I am doing the Royal Theater in Toronto, Canada. It's about 400 seats. I need you guys to come out, tell people. I'm bringing a new hour. Tell everybody about that. And uh, for all other tour dates of next year, go to paulverzi.com. Uh, Bill, check out. Bill, Bill has Bill. six dates left. Bill has six dates left of his And then fucking- that's it. I have nothing on the books, Paul. I have nothing. I'm taking uh, some time off. This movie's going to be done. I'm going to have to promote it and all of that stuff. But I am taking... A well-deserved. Listen to me, Paul. I'm fucking sick here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? You still look good. And you know what? Thanks, Paul. You deliver deliver always. Um. All right, guys. This is till episode seventy-three. We are out of here. Take care. Good to see you. Uh. Good luck tonight with your Patriots. Let's go, Pats, dude. That maybe that might take the points. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later.